Hi, good evening, and thank you for joining us tonight for Ask Me Anything with Planning Director Gwen Wright. My name is Marin Hill, and I'm a planner with Montgomery Planning Department, and I'll be facilitating the discussion tonight. I'm going to give um, a few brief instructions in Spanish and then continue on with our instructions in English before we turn it over for Gwen's presentation. So, bienvenidos y gracias por participar en Pregúnteme Cualquier Cosa con la directora de planificación, Gwen Wright. Me llamo Maren y yo voy a facilitar esta charla. Si quieres escuchar en español, por favor, marque el número de teléfono en la pantalla y entra el conference ID. So, I always like to start out and just ask how everyone is feeling, how you're doing tonight. I know that these are challenging times and, um, you know, some days are harder or easier than others. And while we're sharing a lot of challenges, we're also um, facing our own unique challenges as individuals or as families. Um, so if you have a second and you feel like it, uh, drop us a word in the chat box about how you're feeling tonight. Um, so I'm going to go over some logistics. Teams Live might be a new um, technology for you. It has been for us and it's still, uh, we're still learning it. This is our fourth event um, using Teams Live. So if you have any questions at any time about how to access any function, if you can drop it in the chat box, we'll try to get uh, back to you as soon as possible. Um, you can also email thrive2050 at montgomeryplanning.org and we'll try to check it throughout the event um, to see if we get any questions um, and I'll drop that information in the chat. Um, if you can see the uh, chat, there is uh, on the screen right here, you'll see how to access the chat box. There are two little uh, bubbles you can see circled on the screen with a red arrow pointing at them. That is how you access the chat and that's how you can ask questions throughout the evening or um, drop comments in. Um, I want to let everyone know that this event will be recorded and it will be posted on our website at www.thrivemontgomery.com. Uh, all the chat conversations will also be saved and shared uh, with planning staff who are working on the Thrive Montgomery 2050 general plan. Um, you can post chats at any time um, during the presentation or after and questions and if you uh, post it during the presentation we'll try to address them um, in the Q&A afterwards. Um, we ask that if you have uh, joined anonymously um, that before you write uh, a chat or a question that you just type your name in or a nickname so that we know how to identify you. Um, unfortunately folks will not be able to speak during the event tonight. Um, so if you are listening in Spanish, we ask, uh, but if you are listening in Spanish, we ask that you please mute yourself so as not to distract from the interpreter. Um, we also ask that you be respectful in your comments. Any comments that use profane language will be dismissed and not shared in the chat. Um, Finally, if you want to see a uh, full screen, you can see right at the uh, bottom of our screen, the line with the two arrows. If you click on that, you'll be able to uh, view the presentation in full screen. Okay, so uh, thanks again for tuning in. Now I'm going to play the presentation and then we'll jump into some question and answer. Hi, I'm Gwen Wright, Planning Director in Montgomery County, Maryland, and welcome to Ask Me Anything. This is an opportunity to talk about Thrive Montgomery 2050, which is our update to Montgomery County's general plan, and to uh, hear from you about some of the ideas that uh, are coming up as part of that effort. So I'd like to share a PowerPoint presentation with you, and then we will move into the question and answer phase of the event. So as I mentioned, this is Ask Me Anything, and uh, we are going to go through a few slides, but then get into a uh, opportunity for you to uh, ask questions, raise, raise issues, or talk about anything related to the general plan you'd like to talk about. 
Again, I'm uh, Gwen Wright, Montgomery County Planning Director, and I'm uh, really happy to be with you today. Uh, one of the things that the general plan is about is, a, is about imagining the future and thinking about what, uh, what the future holds for Montgomery County. We've been uh, talking to a lot of people in the community and our planners have been putting their uh, thoughts together. And what we want to do is ask you to let your imagination uh, go wild and think about what Montgomery County in 2050 will be. Uh, some of the things we've thought about are um, picturing vibrant gathering places and open spaces in every neighborhood, uh, a theme that we're calling complete communities. Uh, picturing that everything you might need is within a 15 minute walk from home without the need to jump in the car and travel long distances. Certainly as we're all um, working through this COVID-19 um, crisis, uh, I, I'm sure we've all thought about how nice it would be to be able to have quick and easy access to our drug stores, to our grocery stores, uh, and not have to uh, feel uh, quite so isolated in our, our neighborhoods. Um, we have been picturing our county roads as safe, walkable, and beautiful boulevards. We've talked about that concept a lot over the last few years, but we really haven't accomplished it. And uh, it, is, it is a really important direction to move. Um, picturing housing as a right uh, with more affordable and attainable housing options. And, and we really like that term attainable because it's not about government subsidized affordable housing. It's about housing that is attainable to our children and grandchildren to enter the real estate market with starter homes that's attainable for older people who want to continue to live in their neighborhood, but maybe want to move out of their single family homes. So those are some of the, the ideas that have been running through our imagination, and we're going to uh, ask you to, to share some of yours. So what is Thrive Montgomery 2050? It's an, it is an update to our general plan, which was last comprehensively updated in 1969, more than 50 years ago. It's a long range vision for the future of the county that deals with future initiatives, countywide policies, uh, infrastructure, community amenities, private development, but it does not go in and change the zoning on any piece of property. What it is, as I've, I've described it to my own staff, is it sets our work program for the next 10 to 20 years in terms of thinking about new programs, new master plans, new projects that we should be undertaking to realize what is hopefully a uh, exciting and, and um, agreed upon vision for how the county is going to grow. When we did our 1969 general plan, um, there were a lot of ideas that were discussed, but they weren't implemented in 1969. Again, a general plan does not immediately change zoning or change master plans. So when the 1969 plan talked about increasing affordable housing, that resulted uh, in uh, the early 70s in our moderately priced dwelling unit law. When that plan talked about protecting farmland, that resulted in 1980 with our preservation of agriculture and rural open space plan, the Ag Reserve, and transfer of development rights. When it talked about guiding the timely installation of needed infrastructure, that resulted in the early 70s in our adequate public facilities ordinance. So if our Thrive Montgomery 2050 plan is successful, people will look back in the year 2050 and say, wow, these new programs and ideas that have been implemented all started in 2020 when that general plan was updated and when they laid out 
ideas for new policies and actions that would guide the future of the county. Why are we doing an update to the general plan now? As mentioned, it's over 50 years old, but more than that, uh, the county has changed from a suburban bedroom community to a community of diverse employment centers of areas that are very urban, uh, including still our suburban and rural communities, but we have some other communities that are very urban uh, with all the, the challenges and advantages that go with that. We have uh, a projected growth of 200,000 new residents in the next 30 years, and we need to think about where those new residents are going to live. We have changing technologies and cultural shifts, and we'll talk more about that, but the fact that I'm um, sharing this presentation with you over the internet, I'm sitting in my dining room at a laptop, and speaking to all of you talks directly to the new technologies, the new ways of communicating, the new ways of relating that we have. As we move into the 21st century, as again, as a county, we're going to need to embrace urbanism for certain portions of the county. We need to think about how we can grow and thrive in a more urban way in many, many parts of the county. Just to reinforce some of the changes that I've just mentioned, one of the, the biggest cultural shifts is the change in county demographics. These images show you are uh, based on census track, our predominant racial or ethnic group in 1990. On the left, in uh, 19, and in 2016 on the right. Uh, the dark blue is uh, predominantly white. You can see how much of that was in the county in 1990 and how that has changed dramatically in 2016. We are now a county where the majority of our residents are people of color and that is going to continue um, over the next 30 years. We have an increasingly older population. Again, as you can see by 2040, it looks like about 46% of our residents will be over the age of 45. That um, is a big change and it is something we must account for as a county. More people are working from home. Well, you're not kidding. <laughs> right now, it's a large number of people working from home. Uh, in 2016, it was 6.2%, which was a large increase from 1990. But I would guess by 2050, that number is going to be much, much higher, possibly even getting close to 50%. Uh, we have learned through this COVID-19 crisis that it is possible to, to work from home, and I think we're going to see a lot more of that. We have done a great deal of outreach, and I'm, I'm very, very proud that we have reached out to people all over the county and in different uh, ways so that we've heard the voices of residents who don't normally participate in the planning process. And what have we heard? Well, one of the big things we've heard is the rent is too darn high. We've also heard about traffic, but we've also heard other things such as we'd like to have mixed income communities and mixed income schools. We don't want to see more houses in the Ag Reserve. We want to protect that important resource. We must relieve the congestion along I-270. Uh, we need to attract independent businesses. Uh, I think that the, the interest in entrepreneurship and in small business came across at so many of our uh, outreach activities. When you think about it, Marriott Corporation was an entrepreneurial small business started in Montgomery County probably about 60, 70 years ago. What is the next Marriott Corporation going to be for Montgomery County? What's the next entrepreneurial small business going to be that turns out 
to be a major, major corporation. Our current land use uh, offers up some challenges. About 35% of the county is uh, in single family zoning and uh, about uh, 43, 44% of the county is in agriculture and parks. What that means is that we have very little unconstrained land left. According to uh, this chart that we've updated recently, only about 15% of the land in the county is unconstrained. And what that means is one major um, reality that the Thrive Montgomery 2050 plan is going to have to uh, deal with and that we're all going to have to shift in our thinking is that our future growth as a county is infill, not green fields, but infill, adaptive reuse of existing buildings, building on pieces of land that maybe we did not think ever would be built upon. One of our favorite sayings at the planning department is uh, we are turning parking lots into places. We need to consider every kind of um, potential site as an infill site in order to accommodate the kinds of growth that we project in the future. Another reality uh, is that our housing growth is not meeting the needs of our growing population. The number of units produced per year has dropped dramatically in the last 30 years. And if we are going to, again, have 200,000 new residents in the next 30 years, we are going to have to have more housing in more places of more types using different building materials, using different kinds of buildings, and we cannot uh, continue on the path that we're on or we will um, not have enough housing and housing prices will continue to rise and become unattainable and unaffordable. When we started general plan, we said, what are our three major outcomes that we want to achieve? What, what's really our framework? And we decided really that economic health, community equity and environmental resilience were the three major outcomes uh, for Thrive Montgomery. And Thrive, I also want to mention, is an important word because we all agree Montgomery County is a great place right now to live and work and play, but we cannot rest on our past successes. If we are going to address some of the challenges of the future that I just described, whether it be the need for more housing or um, the fact that we have uh, communities that uh, have very, very significant traffic problems or the fact that we have communities with significant uh, equity issues. If we're going to address those kinds of problems and not just live with the status quo, we are going to have to make changes. We are going to have to make shifts in the way we uh, see the county and how we see it grow. And that is going to be necessary for us to move beyond the status quo and to move into thriving in the 21st century. All of this has resulted in a, uh, a vision for Montgomery County that, that is the result of a lot of the feedback we've gotten at our outreach uh, feedback we've gotten from the planning board and from the county council about some of our initial ideas. So we believe that the vision for the county in 2050 is no longer just one central corridor, I-270, uh, surrounded by large uh, wedges in the rest of the county, but really a web of complete communities connected by vibrant corridors. And those complete communities are individual and unique centers of neighborhood activity and urban nodes that optimize land use with a variety of housing types, 
and price points and are close to transit, workplaces, needed goods and services, public amenities and active park spaces. We have many, many great communities in the county and we want to assure that they are complete, that they have all of the elements that are needed to uh, create a complete community. We want to see those communities connected by vibrant corridors, corridors that are not just how you get from here to there, but are comfortable, safe, multimodal transportation corridors with housing and services along those corridors. We also want to optimize our corridors of green parks, stream valleys, and trails to provide additional ways to connect communities throughout the county. We have looked at all of our um, issues and ideas and, and categorized them into uh, eight significant goals. All of those goals are related to our three uh, outcomes, our framework of economic health, environmental resilience, and community equity. But we feel like the policies and actions that need to be considered fall into these eight categories. Safe and efficient travel, complete communities, diverse and adaptable growth, connectedness, affordability and attainability, diverse economies, healthy and sustainable environment, and culture and design. To uh, get to the vision that uh, I've just been describing, to address the many uh, issues and challenges we have, we have to we have to deal with some big shifts as a county, and uh, we want to identify some of those big shifts that are going to inform our policies and actions. First of all, um, again, we have to understand that we are not a bedroom suburban community anymore, that urbanism is a good thing and many parts of our county are urban. Uh, corridors connecting these nodes are the future. And in each of these nodes, we want to have 15 minute living where you're able to get to everything you need, including work, schools, um, recreational facilities, healthcare in 15 minutes. Uh, as we all, again, experience the COVID-19 crisis, uh, what we want to make sure is that people aren't isolated in their homes and neighborhoods, but have the ability to get to the drugstore, to purchase drugs, to get to a grocery store, to uh, get to places where they can take a walk and experience the outdoors. All in 15 minutes of walking or biking. Active lifestyles, they equal not only health, but also the, the social connectedness that is so important. Again, what we've experienced as an, a real need over the last couple of months of quarantine is that we need connections of people and places and that uh, active lifestyles with 15 minute living, all of these are elements and ways to build on that social connectedness. We also need to begin to think of housing as a right and a value, uh, that we need housing to not just be government subsidized affordable, but we need it to be attainable to the younger generation coming up, but also to the older generation who is thinking about leaving their single family home, but want to stay in their existing neighborhood. Major roads needs, need to be transformed into boulevards. And we're gonna talk about that more, but a big part of that is that we have to stop planning for cars. 
and we need to depave the county. That's again, the parking lots to places idea, but it, it even goes beyond that. We need to have um, the least possible uh, paving in both our um, public rights of ways, but also in our uh, new development and growth. We need varieties of commercial uses. We completely support and need our large employers and our government um, campuses like NIH and FDA, but we need smaller businesses. We need entrepreneurs. We need people willing to have businesses in our complete communities and along our corridors. Uh, it is a mix of uses that is necessary to really create this sense of a complete community. We need regional solutions to problems. We often think pretty uh, insularly in Montgomery County, and we need to stop that. We need to start thinking regionally uh, about how we can connect from a transportation standpoint, how we can handle many of our housing problems, how we can uh, deal with uh, te technological issues and solutions uh, on a regional basis. Diversity is our strength, not only our diversity of uh, racial, ethnic, and, and heritage, but our diversity of place, the fact that we are urban, suburban, and rural. That is our strength as a county. We are a, a really um, complex and strong web of places and people. And finally, we have to embrace that importance of place. We need to understand that people do want to come together. It is part of our social fabric. We need to have places to do that in every community. We need to encourage placemaking uh, with um, appropriate public art, appropriate design of public spaces, and with great architecture. We deserve to have the highest quality places in this region. And I think we need to demand great design and, and move forward with great places. Just to highlight a few of those topics, when we talk about corridors, you see Rockville Pike on the left and 14th Street in DC on the right. Lots to learn from these images. What's important is, hap is what happens not only outside the right of way, creating great buildings and um, great architecture, but also what happens within the right of way. Uh, getting rid of overhead utilities having wide sidewalks, having uh, streets that have bike paths, strong crosswalks and frequent crosswalks, uh, places for on-street parking. All of these things go to take a large swath of asphalt and make it more human, making it safer for pedestrians and creating a corridor that people want to walk up and down and that they want to populate. Again, the parking lots to places idea on the upper portion of this slide on the left, you see the old mid Pike Plaza with its giant parking lot. On the right, you see Pike and Rose, where that parking lot has been developed into smaller, more manageable blocks with green roofs, parks, treed areas, um, solar panels, uh, ways to make it a more uh, humane place that people want to populate, where they want to stop, where they want to socialize and gather. On the regional solution side, I'll just share this one image which relates to transportation, although I've mentioned it could, we can think about many, many issues on a regional basis. In this, it's looking how we can extend transit to really, really make those connections 
with our neighbors in Prince George's County, the District of Columbia, Northern Virginia, and of course our neighbors to the north in Frederick and Howard counties. Transit is the solution. It is really the, the most important solution and we uh, think there are lots of opportunities to connect uh, on a regional basis. Finally, embracing the importance of place. Again, this is a great image because it shows people coming together to enjoy, frankly, what's a parking lot, but it's been turned into a farmer's market and it's become a place. We can do this on all scales and at all levels where we are going to create places that are gathering spots, that are opportunities for our communities to have, to have focus, to have identity. Um, we're all craving those kinds of locations, especially now during the time of, of, of quarantine. But when we embrace that importance of place, we need to make sure to demand that those places are the best that they can be, that we have a high quality of design, of landscape design, of park design, of public art, and of placemaking of all types. Just to uh, end up with our project timeline, we have been working hard for nearly a year now, uh, looking at the trends, looking at the issues, drafting visions and goals, doing a lot of outreach, reporting back into our planning board and our county council. Where we are now is uh, where the rubber meets the road. We're working on drafting some detailed policies and actions that will be presented to the planning board on June 11th. And we want to hear from you. That is why we are doing this event and others. We would like to hear if we're headed in the right direction. Our working draft will be out September 2020 with a planning board public hearing in the fall and transmittal to the council in March of 2021. And the council will be reviewing and hopefully approving this Thrive Montgomery 2050 plan in April or May of uh, 2021. So that concludes the presentation. What we're really interested in now is what questions or comments do you have about Thrive Montgomery 2050? Share your comments in the chat and I am thrilled to talk about this very, very special and important project. Okay, okay. Thank, thank you. Thanks for joining us again. And um, I just wanted to remind everyone that you can continue to drop uh, any questions or comments in the chat box um, and we will try to address them throughout the Q&A. Um, and if your questions, uh, if we run out of time, we are compiling a document with answers to questions um, that do not get answered. Uh, so you can look for that on our website and I'll drop the website in the chat as well. Um, Gwen, so obviously the pandemic has changed um, how we're living, how we're thinking, um, also how we're building and planning. Um, this first question that we have is from Amanda Farber via Jason Yang. Um, and Amanda asks, how much do you think this crisis will affect Bethesda getting built out? Well, I think that the COVID-19 crisis is going to affect uh, everything. It's going to affect how we work. It's going to affect um, how we uh, communicate with each other. It's going to affect so many aspects of our lives and we're still in the midst of it. So it's really hard to know what all of the ramifications of this crisis are going to be. Um, we have not yet seen a significant slowdown in our regulatory caseload in terms of projects being um, 
uh, moving forward and uh, going to the next step in the process. However, uh, there will be a lot of um, a lot of changes coming up. I think we're going to have a lot of hard times from an economic perspective. I think we're going to have um, financing issues will become more difficult for large projects. Uh, luckily, we have a number of large projects in Bethesda that are well underway, that are under construction. Uh, and I'm very hopeful that those projects will be successfully completed and occupied. There may be a, um, a bit of a, a breather, a lapse in how quickly the next round of projects come forward. But, um, you know, I think that it's a little too early to know for sure. Uh, I do think that Bethesda is um, definitely moving in the direction that the Bethesda downtown plan had envisioned. And I hope that we can uh, see that progress continue. Great, thank you. Thank you. Our next question is, um, well, actually, I'll give you two questions, both related to, to housing and the general plan. Uh, the first um, is from a participant who asks about, how about more housing in single family zoning? Is this something that the general plan can do? And then we also have a question from Chris Reynolds um, that asks about when we allow, when we make zoning changes to allow more density, how can we ensure that the density comes iteratively, so for example, single family homes to duplexes to quads rather than skipping straight to uh, past missing middle to um, more dense uh, high rise apartments. Um, those, yeah, those are great questions. Um, I think what we envision as part of Thrive Montgomery is that there will be um, a greater mix of housing types, particularly along some of our major corridors. We see our corridors as locations for additional uh, growth, for additional density, uh, both housing and some mix of uses to make those corridors really uh, livable. Um, but uh, I think it's a great question as to how do you make sure that we don't just end up with um, a line of either more townhouses or more multifamily if we can get some unique mixes of housing types? How do we do that? And I think uh, that what we're going to see, we hope, come out of this uh, Thrive Montgomery plan is a, an opportunity to um, create some uh, design guidelines uh, for missing middle, some, uh, you know, perhaps overlay zones, uh, different ways to assure that missing middle just doesn't become, um, you know, more townhouses or more typical multifamily, but that it really does provide a mix of housing types. But that will require um, very careful action and study. What, what this project is going to do is sort of lay out the, the, the framework and the game plan for how to move forward, but there is going to have to be additional work done both in um, master plans that we have going on right now, like the Silver Spring downtown plan, and in other kinds of corridor master plans that we may take up in the future. Thanks again. Thanks again. This question yeah, comes you. from Wendy Calhoun um, about schools. She says, where are we going to put all the schools for the children included in that 200,000 uh, new residents over the next um, decades? So thanks, Wendy. It's good to hear from you. You've been one of our most loyal participants in these conversations. And, uh, and I'm glad because schools are an incredibly important issue. Uh, they are an important part of complete communities and having uh, new ways of addressing school capacity is really essential. Um, today, I think we have a fairly uh, suburban way of thinking about schools. Schools are becoming larger. They are really um, focused on uh, people arriving to those schools uh, in vehicles. 
we're hoping we can promote the idea of really walkable schools through this idea of complete communities so that uh, we can encourage Montgomery P County Public Schools to maybe think a little bit differently, to think about doing infill schools, to think about adaptively reusing uh, existing buildings uh, as schools and to uh, create opportunities for people to have walkable schools as parts of their community. Uh, I think that we don't have very many large tracts of 10 acres or 15 acres or 20 acres available any longer for large suburban schools. We really need to be thinking about infill schools, walkable schools, adaptive reuse of other buildings, um, sort of a, a more creative way of looking at providing schools for all of our residents. Thanks, Gwen. Um, we have a question about outreach. The, one of our participants asked how we are reaching out to black and brown communities um, where the focus has recently been um, more on the COVID crisis. Well, uh, the focus I think for many communities right now is on the COVID crisis. Uh, we, um, so we're, we're really working to uh, make sure that we are sensitive to that and that we reach out to everyone in a way that um, where, where they have enough space and time to focus on the important things like the COVID crisis, but to also give us input on these projects. Um, we have been doing outreach for about a year now. And we've made a very, very specific effort to reach out to communities who do not typically participate in the planning process. We have had events in all parts of the county. We have had um, outreach events in uh, a lot of communities that, uh, again, probably have, have never thought about the general plan. We have reached out to young people. We have worked with the Gandhi Brigade and other um, groups of students to get their input on Thrive Montgomery 2050. Uh, and I think that we have gotten a lot of really interesting um, feedback that we would not have gotten otherwise. We've gotten a focus on the need for affordable and attainable housing. We've gotten a focus on the need for daycare. We've gotten a lot of interest in entrepreneurial small businesses and how to support entrepreneurial small businesses. We've heard a lot from communities who have not typically participated in the planning process. Right now, um, you know, we're, we're again aware that COVID is taking up a lot of people's mental energy, um, but we're continuing to do events like this. Uh, and we have, uh, again, Spanish translation, but we're also on Saturday doing an event, an Ask Me Anything event that is going to be entirely in Spanish with English translation. Um, because we are working hard to reach out again to those people who do not typically participate in the planning process. Um, I would love to continue to do that throughout the next year as this process continues through to the planning board and council because we do need to hear all the voices. Thanks, Gwen. Thanks, Gwen. Um, a question about how the general plan is going to balance both the need for green infrastructure with affordability. Well, again, these are fantastic questions. Um, I truly believe that urbanism and green infrastructure are not mutually exclusive, that we can create great uh, urban mixed use environments while actually improving uh, a lot of our sustainability factors. When you think about what we have today in many areas uh, with strip shopping centers and large surface parking lots, that's 
really about as bad for the environment as you can get because none of those surface parking lots have any treatment of storm water and all of the water with all of the um, oil and other um, uh, bad things <laughs> uh, on those parking lots are rolling right off into our water system and into ultimately the Chesapeake Bay. That is not the way to move forward. Um, if you take those parking lots and convert them into neighborhoods with green roofs, with street trees, with small parks, with uh, green cover, you can uh, dramatically reduce the amount of stormwater runoff and you can create great green communities at the same time that you're um, providing more housing for people, particularly near transit. Again, uh, you know, one of the greenest things that you can do is to provide housing near transit in a compact form of development, reduce the vehicle miles traveled by getting people out of their cars and into, onto transit and walking. Um, and those are all really important uh, environmental pluses. Thanks, Gwen. To uh, build on this, uh, the idea of transportation and the environment, we've gotten a couple questions um, about highway expansion and um, fighting climate change. Uh, this one from Diane Cameron. Uh, she says she likes the shift, stop planning for cars um, and the big shifts. And she said, given the shift, can we expect that Thrive 2050 will clearly state Montgomery County will no longer build highway projects, um, neither new highways or highway extensions. And she also mentions the uh, proposed expansion of M83 in Clarksburg, Germantown, and Gaithersburg would impact over 40 acres of parkland and over 70 uh, total acres of forest. So um, thanks for that question. Um, the emphasis of Thrive Montgomery 2050 is absolutely moving people out of cars and promoting transit as the solution. However, I do not at this time believe there's going to be a statement in Thrive Montgomery that we will never build another road in Montgomery County or another major road in Montgomery County. Cars are here, people will continue to use them, and we can't, um, we can't ignore that. However, we are very, very uh, much on the side of promoting transit options instead of new roads. It is really, really important to prioritize where we spend our money on infrastructure in the future. And so I would say that Thrive Montgomery is going to have a clear direction that the priority of spending money on infrastructure should be for transit and walkability, not for additional um, roads for cars. Thanks, Gwen. Um, a question now from a name that you might uh, find familiar, Brooke Farquhar uh, asks, how do you plan to retain the character of areas that have rural heritage, uh, but are not in the agricultural reserve? So they do not have the tools other than the zoning ordinance and master plans, which are limited in their design. Um, and she's talking about places, she says, like Ashton and Sandy Springs. So uh, thanks, Brooke. Uh, good to hear from you. Um, that is a very important question because it's important to emphasize that complete communities and design excellence is not only about urban areas. It's about our suburban communities, our rural villages, and um, even, even our ag reserve. And uh, I do believe that it is important to put new tools in place that will give us greater control over 
how some of these very fragile kinds of urban design questions are resolved. Uh, we are in the midst right now of an Ashton uh, plan, uh, and I think we're going to be looking at hopefully some solutions that allow Ashton to become a more um, uh, lively, small rural center, but still address the important design issues that uh, will allow it not to be overwhelmed by development. It is a balance. Everything we are talking about is, um, is a balance. Very few of these issues have straightforward, easy yes or no answers, but that's what makes planning fun, uh, that we look for these uh, solutions to provide great communities while still managing change and allowing, uh, allowing new ideas to move forward. Thanks, this next question is from Melissa M. Um, and she says she hears a lot about walkability in retail, but what the pandemic has really um, revealed is that there isn't great walkability to healthcare, groceries, pharmacies, banks, childcare, um, and, um, and other services. So she asks, what can we do to correct the over-retailization uh, and create a better mix of establishments and town centers and planned areas like Pike and Rose and Rock Spring for true socioeconomic integration? Um, again, great question. Um, the reality is that um, for new retail um, facilities in our neighborhoods uh, and for transit for that matter in our neighborhoods, one of the things we're going to need is some density. Uh, we are not going to see new retail coming in to even the corridors that we're talking about unless there is some density along those corridors to support the new retail. Uh, I think it is extremely important that people do have the ability to walk to those kinds of places mentioned in the question, whether it be retail or healthcare or grocery stores. And um, in order to get those types of uses in our neighborhoods at a smaller scale, we are going to have to create real neighborhoods of um, residents and density to support those uses. So it's a little bit of a chicken and egg kind of solution. You need to have the people before the businesses want to come. Um, but you also perhaps need to support smaller entrepreneurial businesses. Not everything is going to be a chain. Uh, we need to think about ways to encourage smaller businesses and to, um, to promote entrepreneurship, mom and pop shops that can provide some of those services that we're talking about. Thanks, and we just have time for two more questions. This one is from Ruth. And uh, she asks, especially in view of the COVID pandemic, how do we, how do you see the pronounced shift from brick and mortar stores uh, to online retail affecting the vision uh, in the general plan for a walkable 15 minute mixed use communities? Well, I do think that uh, for um, sort of the, the kinds of goods and services that you traditionally got in um, clothing stores and other kinds of um, houseware stores and so forth. We, I don't think we're going to see those um, in neighborhoods uh, or perhaps even in our downtowns. Um, there is going to be a change in our retail fabric, but all of us need services. We need groceries, we need drugstores, we need to get our hair cut. I definitely need to get my hair cut. Uh, we need those kinds of services. And I think those are the kinds of um, uh, neighborhood serving retail uses 
that are going to make up our complete communities. Um, today, you know, for those of you who are in quarantine, wouldn't it be great to be able to walk a block or two from your home and be able to pick up an ice cream? Wouldn't it be great to be able to walk uh, a block or two from your home and get uh, your prescription at the drugstore? And some of us experience that, have that, have that uh, ability, but, but many of us don't. And um, I think as we look at becoming more resilient in the face of change, those kinds of um, complete communities are going to become essential. Thanks, Gwen. And the, um, the final question we have is from Susan Spock. Uh, she says that she thinks most of the goals are good, but she is concerned that cost is a real issue um, and that in many places around the county, um, transit is not currently an option. Um, so she asks, how will the county meet these goals that are in the general plan? when additional transit is uh, is so expensive building new lines and when developers often balk at the expense of putting utilities underground creating true park space and implementing best practices for stormwater well uh again as i i said earlier if it was easy um it wouldn't be any fun uh this is a challenge we are laying out a vision that will take time to implement. Uh, we need to think about um, transit as not, not, not just necessarily being uh, the red line or the purple line or the bark rail. We need to think about transit as including uh, buses, as including um, transit on demand, which is an interesting uh, new service that our county department of transportation has been experience has been experimenting with um, so i think that uh, we need to set the vision we need to prioritize our expenditures towards that vision as i mentioned earlier prioritize infrastructure expenditures towards transit rather than roads and um, and facilities for vehicles think about how we uh, want to grow and then prioritize our capital improvement program in that direction. We have a lot of opportunities to get uh, certain amenities through the development review process, and that's something we work on today. But what we are trying to do is make sure that we are headed um, all rowing in the same direction. We're headed as a community in the same direction, and we're setting our priorities based on that direction. That is the biggest goal of the Thrive Montgomery plan, is to, to set that direction and to get the buy-in so that we can all move together to solve the issues and problems that we've identified. Gwen, thank you so much uh, for your responses and thanks everyone for participating and for your many questions and comments. Um, I wanted to uh, let everyone know about some upcoming dates. Um, on June 11th, the draft policies and actions for Thrive, uh, Thrive Montgomery 2050 will be presented to the planning board so you can watch that online um, and submit comments. Um, throughout June, we're going to have more opportunities for community members to participate and tell us what they think. We're going to be hosting a series of virtual community chats that will be on specific issue areas um, and will kind of allow for a deeper dive into the topics covered in the general plan. Finally, if you want to get in touch with us, you can follow us on social media or send us a message. Use the hashtag uh, Thrive Montgomery. Um, or you can send us an email at thrive2050 at montgomeryplanning.org. Um, and if we did not get to your question tonight, we always have more questions than we can get to. Um, we are compiling a list of responses uh, to questions um, 
that we'll be posting on our website as well. Um, again, I wrote it in the chat, but that is uh, thrivemontgomery.com. Thank you once again for participating.